Hi guys, this is Doug coming to you from Fellowship of the Martyrs and Liberty Disaster Relief here from the basement of one of the uh, ministry houses in Liberty, Missouri. And I um, want to talk to you some today about intentional communities. This has come up uh, recently because a young lady that would like to move here and be a part of the ministry and wants to participate in what God's doing here um, is having to go to court to fight for custody for her daughter against her mother who wants to have her found incompetent because she's going to go join a cult. And I'm really sick of this. Uh, and I, I, I don't know how many other people might run into the same kind of stuff. Um, but I, for the, for the purposes of education, uh, I want to dispel some of the idiocy that gets thrown around in, um, knee jerk reactions by people who don't seem to process information, uh, well and use it for their own purposes. Um, <clears throat> recently I went to a website, um, called IC.org. That is the, uh, International Directory of Intentional Communities. Now, there are all kinds of intentional communities. For example, I worked at a college, uh, for a while as a director of residence life and student life that was run by the Sisters of Charity of Leavenworth. And they have a um, mother house where the old nuns can come and live when they retire from the various ventures that the Sisters of Charity have. They have a variety of hospitals. They have missions around the world. They have high schools, and, uh, and they have the college in Leavenworth, Kansas. And uh, the sister, who are professional religious folks, are paid by the uh, cooperative. Uh, they get a little stipend for personal needs. They get a car if they have a need for a car, or they borrow one from the pool if they need to. They live in community. Uh, they eat in community, typically. And um, they're in Leavenworth. They have the hospital and the college. Various of the sisters are professors, and their ongoing education is paid for by the collective. Um, and that is one uh, a very common, very typical Christian um, intentional community. I have no idea how many Catholic convents and monasteries there are in the world. They would not be listed <laughs> with IC.org typically because though they're intentional communities, they're they they don't they don't feel any need to be registered with uh, a, a group like the intentional communities list that is um, leans toward the tree hugger, let me just say. <laughs> um there are thousands and thousands and thousands of religious communities all over the world. In Israel, there is no stigma uh, for living on a kibbutz. It, it, it is um, not a commune in the sense that a commune is a very communistic, everybody shares everything, you put everything in a pot, nobody has any personal belongings except what's shared with the community or what's needed for the work that they do, and everything is equally shared. That is the definition of a commune. We are not a commune. There are some that are out there that have chosen to manifest that way or to operate that way. We don't do that, and we don't feel like the Christian model in the first century of the Bible is communistic in that sense. Um, anyway, um, and, and even the convents, if, if your grandma gives you something, you're perfectly entitled to keep it and you don't have to turn it over to the, to the collective, um, or whatever. If you inherited money, you, you know, have a choice of what to do with it. There's, there's, and I'm sure there's other different groups that are different. Anyway, all of this to say that 
um, I went on the uh, Intentional Community website, and they have a directory that includes 2,567 intentional communities all over the world, of which 1,765 are in the United States. It shouldn't be surprising that um, the U.S. is heavily weighted on the list because it's an English-speaking site and it requires the Internet to register. So you're going to automatically not get a lot of listings from, you know, say, North Korea or other places, uh, for example, where there may well be lots of intentional communities for survival purposes or otherwise, but um, wouldn't maybe want to be known that they're even there or wouldn't have Internet to register or aren't English speaking and don't particularly care to be listed on the list. Anyway, they're, they're on this list. There are 1,765 intentional communities listed. Of those, some are eco-villages, some are student co-ops where at Berkeley or someplace else, uh, a student group has set up a, a, a fund to buy a house and live eight or ten in the house more expensively than they could any other way while they're in school, um, or some other creative co-housing option. Um, some of them are uh, are focused around a common goal, like like um, stopping global warming or a religious objective of some sort or another. Uh, some of them have hundreds and hundreds of people. Some of them have two or three or four people. Some of them are just starting. Some have been around for years and years and years. Um, there have been, um, uh, I was also interested to find as I'm looking down the state list, Kansas, um, had 15 intentional communities. Iowa had 12, Illinois had 27, uh, several of them, uh, student co-ops around Chicago, Oklahoma had six, Arkansas had 17, and Missouri had 51. And that's just the ones that are listed, and I know of at least three or four that aren't listed, including us, um, and the Urban uh, urban Farm Guys and some others that, that aren't on the list. Um, of the 2,567, a total on their directory, 169 were real communes. Okay, so one half of 1% of the intentional communities were communes. Okay, it's important to be specific with your language. Okay, it's important that, that if we are going to answer for every word out of our mouth before a holy God, that we be as truthful as possible especially when we describe somebody else and it has the potential to hurt them. Um, for example, the word cult is just about meaningless. It, it has different definitions sociologically, uh, demographically, theologically, and then the popular culture, drink the Kool-Aid, kind of uh, people are all going to kill, kill themselves definition. Now, I've done a lot of research on cults, especially suicide cults, since uh, I've been accused of all kinds of things. And let me say that there are very, very few. The Jonestown Massacre is one of, if not the most known about event in human history across all nations. I read some article that said the Titanic and the Jonestown Massacre are the two most recognized human events uh, um, anywhere in the world that you go. I think Muhammad Ali was the most known person. <laughs> that may have been a few years ago. Anyway, so people have this overwhelming you know, thing in their head that intentional communities are communes, are cults, they're going to drink the Kool-Aid, and they all idealize suicide. Now, first of all, it wasn't Kool-Aid, it was Flavor-Aid, <laughs> and they weren't Christian, they were communists, um, and a lot of them didn't die voluntarily, they were murdered. 
<coughs> the only group. Uh, then you got the Comet Hale Bob Nike wearing guys that uh, committed suicide. Again, not a Christian group. Definitely New Age Pie in the Sky guys. And, um, uh, and and because these things are real dramatic, and because parents cry and and um, whatever they 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 get really burned into the the, the communal psyche. Uh, but they're very rare. They are really very rare. Um, the uh, Branch Davidians in Waco did not have any suicidal idealization, didn't didn't have any practice runs at committing suicide like the Jonestown folks did. They regularly gathered to practice, this is what we're going to do. If this happens as a statement to change things, and uh, uh, we're going to all commit suicide. And they were in agreement and practiced several times with the group, not knowing whether it was real or not. That's not the case in Waco. That was death by tanks and fireballs from the government. That was not suicide. And whatever else might or might not have been going on uh, within the walls there, we may never really truly know because of the spin of the media, because, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, Ruby Ridge is the same way. There, It was... Um, government overreaching more than anything else. The only group, there was a group called the Restoration of the Ten Commandments in Africa, Nigeria, I believe. Uh, a very conservative, legalistic group. They had a couple of prophet guys that were projecting the end of the world was going to be such and such a date. It came and went. Uh, a lot of questions started to be asked about these guys. They adjusted their prophecy and said, okay, it's, it's in two more months. Everybody, okay, benefit of the doubt, let's wait and see. Nothing happened. Then people were getting real twitchy. Where did all the money go? Uh, how come these guys live in big mansions? And how come they're not uh, accurate about their prophecies? So they called everybody together, locked them in a barn, set the barn on fire, and, uh, and ran. And these two guys are still wanted by Interpol for massive murder. Um, now, um, let's talk about intentional community for a minute. Intentional communities happen in human nature all the time. Um, I was in a fraternity in college, a social fraternity. That is a sort of a self-replicating intentional community. These guys decide to recruit more guys that harmonize with them, fit with them, and want to hang out with them, and live together, and do stuff together, um, because we like being around folks that are like us. We can talk all we want about the end of racism in America, or discrimination, or people being open-minded about uh, different races and whatever, but by and large, churches on Sunday are pretty much one color. And it's not that they have rules one way or the other. I've been to Hispanic congregations. I've been to black churches. I've been to white churches. I've been wherever. And um, here in Liberty, I don't think there's any of them that are prejudiced. It's just that there's something about human nature that would rather hang out with people that we think understand us. And um, you can rail against that and try to force desegregation in the churches, for example. Um, but I think when people voluntarily have a choice, they may go as tourists to see what other people are like or how other people worship or how other people do things. Uh, but by and large, it's kind of part of the human nature to to want to be around people that we're comfortable with. And to say that's racism, um, then 
broad brushes just about every institution of man uh, with, with that label. Because when people have a choice... Uh, they tend to want to be around people that speak their language, people that understand them, people that they can relate to, people that they're comfortable with. And in, in every big city, you have Chinatown. You have the the Eastern European section. You have the Hispanic section. And um, nobody forced them to do that. It wasn't designated that way by the city. Can you even imagine that? Um and I think intentional communities are um, a way to cut costs, to live more inexpensively without uh, the burden of constantly chasing the next dollar to compete with the, the, the neighbor next door chasing the American dream. And it's, a, and it's a response to a desire to want to be around people that understand you um, that get what you're saying, that, uh, whatever. So whether it is, uh, Cherith Brook here in, uh, Kansas city, that is a Catholic intentional community. Uh, they were on the news recently. Um, two or three families came from all over with kids to live together. Um, they don't know, they don't know the other families coming. Uh, they don't know what their kids are like, uh, but they have this passion for the inner city, for urban farming to grow uh, organically in the vacant lots of the inner city. They all seem to have dreadlocks and long beards, and um, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Do some of them disagree with me theologically? Sure. Practically everybody disagrees with something. Um, does that matter? No, I don't think it really does. Um, the uh, urban farm guys here in Kansas City, we've met some of them. Same thing. Instead of Catholic, they're evangelical Christian, but they have a passion to see the revitalization of the urban core. And they believe that instead of everybody leaving a blighted area, why don't some people with some guts move down there, raise their families down there, uh, grow gardens on the on the empty empty vacant lots, uh, engage the people together, provide good food where there might be uh, desert food deserts where there's no grocery store for a mile or two, and you can provide food from your co-op that people can buy on food stamps that's healthy, that's organic, and so on. There's there's a lot of passion. Uh, for people out there, and and not a lot of ways to direct it uh, sometimes. But when you find two or three or five or ten or a hundred people that are that are in line with whatever your passion is, there's a natural response to want to hey let's go let's go do this together. Let's you know it's like every Mickey Mickey Rooney movie where it's like hey it's summertime there's nothing to do let's put on a show. <laughs> And, and do a musical for the neighborhood. You, you know, there, there's just this, like, hey, we could do something. Let's go. Let's let's uh, go do something. <coughs> anyway, <coughs> if you made a list of all the people, uh, let's say children, that were harmed in an intentional community of whatever kind, I think you might be able to come up with five or six examples out of just common knowledge of popular culture. Certainly, there are a lot of allegations against the Catholic Church and priests, summer camps, whatever, Catholic uh, abuses. Uh, so you could argue that any mother that took their child to a Catholic church uh, is not being a good mother because uh, there are high statistical probabilities that their young boy might be molested. Okay, but just because there are stories in the news doesn't mean it's a high probability. Because of all the priests in all the world and all the young boys that went to a Catholic church, there really are very few 
that uh, are actually reporting something or have uh, brought up charges. Now, you could say, well, a lot of it's unreported. Well, it, it may be, but still, statistically, we're talking about a billion, a billion Catholics out there. And um, now, uh, other other incidents. You know, I talked about the restoration of uh, the Ten Commandments group. There's the Jonestown group. There's the Branch Davidians, Ruby Ridge, um, the Hale Bob Comet. They were all adults. Um, so, not not a lot of other references. Um, Tony Alamo's group, something happened there. Nobody's real clear on that, but they got split up by the government and told them not to all, just go away, don't talk to each other ever again. Um, that's about it, okay? So you're talking maybe less than 10 instances. And, and, I, and I just told you there's 2,500 intentional communities just on this one list, this one directory. And who knows how many other kibbutzes, uh, religious communities of other kinds that aren't on that list all over the world. If it was automatically dangerous to go live in an intentional community, then there should be constant news stories about these folks all the time, and um, there's just not. Um, I, believe it or not, was a cheerleader. Uh, in high school and in college and coached after that, tumbling and cheerleading. And uh, I can tell you statistically, it is the most dangerous sport for high school and college students. Uh, your daughter is far more likely to have a permanent injury or lose her life in cheerleading than in any other sport you could let her play. Um, you could probably also tie uh, eating disorders and some other stuff to that as well. So, uh, statistically speaking, uh, it is actually uh, more than football, more than hockey, more dangerous and uh, you could make the argument statistically that a mother who allowed her kid to be a cheerleader is uh, being irresponsible because statistically the dangers to that kid are uh, huge compared to other things or doing nothing. Uh, and all of the dangers of, of practically any high school sports are much greater than living in an intentional community. Um, I, um, I don't know how to, I don't know how to quantify the dangers of being a part of something that's wrong or, or misguided or wrongheaded. Are the Moonies wrongheaded? Yes. Are they a cult? Well, in the sense that they're an unorthodox group, religiously, they're a cult. Um, in the sense that they are not Christian, then they're heretical from a Christian standpoint. Sociologically, are they a cult? I don't think they are anymore. They've been around for years and years and years and years. And cult typically means a new group a, a, a splinter of something that's starting fresh, uh, sociologically speaking. And uh, they've got millions and millions of members. Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, are they a cult? Um, religiously, you could say that they, say that they were. Uh, uh, demographically, the Mormons don't live in community, don't, uh, as a whole don't uh, share all of their resources any more than any other church that takes up an offering on Sunday and buys a building and whatever. Um, they don't uh, live in compounds. They don't, you know, whatever. So uh, to, to call the Mormons, for example, a cult, um, the Catholics teach their kids that a cracker on Sunday actually turns into the body and blood of Jesus and that they're supposed to eat that and be cannibals. 
um, th that sounds fairly crazy. And uh, a Catholic mother or father that truly believes that, um, for an atheist psychologist, probably could not pass a test that they're not crazy. And it, uh, the Muslims often accuse the Christians of being cannibals because they believe they're drinking the blood of, of Christ and eating his flesh. Um, where, where, do you, where do you draw the line? There are groups, for example, uh, I've watched the videos about uh, uh, Dancing Rabbit is an eco-village in northern central Missouri. They have 70 or 100 people in an idyllic sort of, you know, pasture-y, sweet, green, organic, uh, walking trails amongst the houses, build your own uh, earth contact, whatever, yurt, house, lodge, whatever. Um, it's real sweet. It's real simple. Uh, and uh, they've got their own little currency, and they have committee meetings, and they handle all their stuff, and... Uh, but they wouldn't like me. They wouldn't like me at all. Um, because I can't stop talking about Jesus. And they can't stop talking about global warming. And uh, they you have to sign an agreement that you'll build whatever house you're going to build with recycled materials. And you will not try to sneak a petroleum-powered engine onto the property. Not a chainsaw. <coughs> <laughs> not a not, not a gas powered remote control plane <laughs> not a not a tiller not a nothing that uses gasoline will you bring on the property uh okay i got no problem with them doing all that i got no problem with them having a community fellowshipping together growing stuff together i think those are all valuable skills to learn um but i'm not welcome there because I'm going to talk about Jesus and they don't want to talk about Jesus because they want to talk about Gaia or the, some other whatever uh, that I think is foolishness. And even though I'm not going to pound them, uh, it, it's, it, I don't fit there. I, I wouldn't fit there. And, and there's some on the intentional community list as you read down, like are, are new members welcome? Yes, but... If you're an evangelical Christian, don't bother. Don't come. <laughs> We're not going to be swayed. We got thrown out of church already, and we don't want to hear from you. <laughs> it's, some of them are just real clear. Like, you will not be happy here if you want us to buy into your whatever. <coughs> anyway, uh, and that's perfectly okay. That's freedom of association. That's the First Amendment kind of, you know, uh, common law right that we have to pick who we want to hang out with. And it's not weird. It's not anything. People move to a suburb where they look at the houses, they look at the neighbors, they look at the cars, they look at the lawns and say, okay, I can see myself living here. Maybe they, maybe they talk to the about the politics with the neighbors. If there's a, too many Confederate flags in the yards, if there's too much whatever, maybe they don't want to live there. Okay. This is, anyway, I think it's just sometimes we rail against what seems to be a fairly unavoidable human condition. As a Christian, I believe that the city church is the only biblical model, that there should be one body of Christians per city, and that we should learn to get along despite difference of opinion about secondary things. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that that's likely to really happen. Uh, because people don't want to lay down their differences. And to them, the timing of the rapture or whether to have communion with grape juice or wine is a huge deal, even though biblically it's not. And they don't they don't wanna they don't want to play nice on some things. That's okay. I still have an obligation to play nice with them one way or another. But I long for the New Jerusalem, where we will all be part of one city, all be part of one body, one intentional community pointed the same direction, in harmony, in unity, with God as our head, um, with peace. 
to me, that's that's beautiful, and that's uh, what I live for, what I sacrifice for, and what I hope to see some little piece of on Earth. Um, this uh, this farm that we're that we've acquired, that we're building, that we're growing. <coughs> it's not a place to hunker down and be away from everybody and just play with our little friends. It's a place to meet needs. It's a place to grow things, to share with people in need. It's a place to teach other people that come from other places how to run an intentional community. It's a place to take in somebody that uh, needs a place to stay for a while and, and wants to learn how to get their cup full and hear God better and and take that back to wherever they came from. We've got people here right now from all over the country, from uh, one from Sweden, one from Germany. <coughs> um, one coming from Phoenix in a week or so, half a week. Anyway, um, I, I don't know if I've... Uh, uh, done much to demystify um, the simplicity of intentional co-housing or intentional communities or eco-villages or convents, monasteries, whatever you want to call them, the kibbutz, commune, whatever it is, um, is that th there is a cry of the human heart to want to be around people that understand them, that support them, that encourage them, that think like them. Um, we have a very diverse group here, racially, even theologically. Uh, we have plenty of folks here that don't don't agree with me on stuff. We have people here who have never watched any of my videos, um, never read my books, you know, don't care. We have folks that are charismatic, folks that aren't. Um, uh, folks from different racial backgrounds, different nationalities, doesn't matter. Um, but they like each other, and they like hanging out together. And uh, they overlook differences where it's not important. And uh, that's worth a lot. Sometimes you can't even get that from family. Um you have to go somewhere else to find folks you can get along with. <laughs> anyway, if you're out there and you're trying to start an intentional community, I think if you're of the eco-friendly, tree-hugging, no styrofoam variety, you won't have too much of a hard time. Uh, if you're an evangelical Christian, I, I think it's going to suck. I really think, I think you're probably fighting uphill. Uh, if you're a Catholic, no big deal. Probably parents and grandparents will get it and like the idea because there is a humongous Catholic precedent for intentional communities, even to the degree that if one of your kids becomes a monk or a nun, you're automatically okay and you're going to heaven. <laughs> Where if, if an evangelical parent has a kid say, hey, I want to go live in an intentional community, there's no, there's no, you understand, there's no concept, there's no box in your head to put that in and see how that's okay because there's, there's no, no real good translation into evangelical Christian of monastery uh, that, that it doesn't. It doesn't compute somehow um, in the Protestant evangelical kind of way of thinking. Um, if you were a Buddhist, no problem. Um, anyway, so I think the New Agers and other folks of the eco variety are, they're probably not going to have too much problem with it. But uh, there's an automatic suspicion. When Christians come together, partly because uh, Satan hates it when Christians come together. Satan's going to whisper to everybody around that something's wrong with it and try to stop it. 
I don't think he minds when Buddhists get together. Uh, I don't think he minds when other groups get together. But when Christians get together, start loving one another and acting as one body, Satan really likes to try to stop that as fast as he can. Uh, when they have a, a church, he'll try to split it. But when they're living, sharing, taking in the poor, feeding the hungry, man, he's going to throw everything he can at it to try to make it stop. And that's just what the Bible says. And if you don't believe in Satan, then you call it whatever you want. But uh, there is a, 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 a force in nature um, that when you do good things, good things will come to you. And when you do good things, there is something out there that wants it to stop. And uh, if you don't want to call it Satan, that's fine. Call it uh, karmic negative energy or uh, bad vibrations or whatever you want. I just know that it's real. <laughs> occasionally it wakes me up in the night with its hands around my throat and uh the name of jesus makes it run so but you can call it whatever you want um anyway uh didn't mean for this to be so long i hope you listen through some of this stuff but uh some statistics i encourage you to go to ic.org and look at some of the groups out there and the happy smiling faces of people that uh are just uh having fun building a farm, working together, hanging out, and uh, trying to do something different than chasing the foolish American dream of getting a bigger boat and a bigger house and uh, more money and somehow I'll be happy. Um, it's about the love, people. It's about taking care of others above your own needs. And um, a lot of people are getting that, even if they're a little, need a little adjustment about the styrofoam and stuff. Anyway, thanks for listening. God bless you all. And uh, um, please be try to be accurate with your words and be careful. Uh, there are real people with real feelings that you hurt when you say mean things. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen.